Hello, this is Ipo Swords, and today we're going to be talking about scarf welding, a historical method of joining a low carbon or pure iron tang to a high carbon blade. Let's talk about that. This is an Afghan pulwar. However, the blade is probably of Indian manufacture for a few reasons I'll get into in a little while. However, what's notable isn't the fact that it's an Afghan pulwar with an Indian blade, but rather the specifics of the construction method used to combine a high carbon, in this case crystalline Wootz blade, with a low carbon or pure iron tang. When we take it over to the table, you'll get a better understanding of this. However, for the moment, let it suffice to say that this is a historical method of both saving high carbon precious steel and strengthening the bond between the tang and the blade as compared to using a more brittle portion of the Wootz here in the handle. Because of the way Wootz is made in buttons of the shape you can see on the screen right now, there's always going to be an end grain at the top which makes a less suitable steel. Often this was used at the very end of the blade because of the way you draw the billet out, and as a result there was a rather crumbly and unusable steel at the end of your billet. This was cut off and forge welded to a piece of iron. On screen now you can see an example from another sword where this is very clearly visible as it has been heavily etched. My example has not been re-etched, and so it's rather more subtle. However, you can see here that this portion is not uh, patterned with the fine crystalline Wootz patterns, and everything below it is. Now, I know this blade was Indian manufactured because of the tin bindi or three dot decoration. This was common in India, as well as the scarf weld between the iron and steel blades. The hilt, however, is distinctly Afghan, having this domed pommel and these downturned beast head quillots. Let's bring it over to the table and we can have a better look at that scarf welded tang. I'm not sure how well you can see it, however, to my eyes you can plainly see that everything from this point down has a fine grained construction and is much darker than the steel used here. I say steel, but it's more likely that this portion was actually made of iron. It looks a little bit like wrought iron, having a few seams where it has been forged down. I'm having a few problems with my lighting in my camera, so I'm going to overlay a few images now so you can better see the tin bindi or three dot decoration and also the scarf welded tang. Now, as noted before, I've not re-etched this, so you can't see the distinctive join between the Wootz blade and the wrought iron, as you can see in the previously shown image. However, you can see that there is a distinct lack of patterning in the tang, which is visible in the blade. This is a mid-18th century blade, and it has characteristically crystalline Wootz rather than the more dendritic woods that I've shown in previous examples. In terms of quality, I'm sure it's quite similar, and it remains sharp to this day, probably having been resharpened at some point in its lifetime, evidenced by the lack of patterning on the edge. However, I do have another sword, also made of woods, which has not been resharpened and is still quite sharp to this day. I'll show that in another video. Just a quick video today to talk about scarf welder tangs. Until next time, stay sharp.